Afternoon, everybody. I'm Dan Kovacevic, columnist at the Pittsburgh Trib. The show is sponsored by Sports Yapper, which is kind of like Twitter without all the other nonsense. It's all sports, all the time. This place used to be all happy sports, all the time, our city. I remember going back to the Winter Classic. I was standing atop the rotunda at Heinz Field and looking out at this amazing scene. Those of you who were there know what I'm talking about. It felt like we had the Olympic opening ceremonies in Pittsburgh. Incredible. We were on top of the world. The Steelers were headed to the Super Bowl. The Penguins marquee franchise in the NHL. Things even looked to be looking up for the Pirates, at least a little bit at the time. And then Sid, of course, gets hurt in that game, his head crashing down to the ice. Steelers lose to the Packers. Pirates go on with two epic collapses, and here we are today cursing our fate with the Steelers at 1-2. and two. The Pirates having lost their 82nd game again this week. Everything looks pretty dark, and it comes back to hockey again. Only this time we're not even going to have any hockey. That's the way it looks right now. I don't understand it. You don't understand it. We might have back in 2004 when the sport was a complete mess. Everything was out of whack. Some payrolls were five times the size of other payrolls. The Penguins were coming off of bankruptcy. They were the worst team in the league. Canada was losing franchises. We understood back then. But today I see across the Twitter account that Bill Daly and the NHL reported no progress in talks again today. Craig Adams, the Penguins player representative, said that the players wanted to hang around and talk about the real issues, the money issues. The owners didn't want to do that. And yet the owners at the end of this week are prepared to knife off all of the October games. Why? Why? Why do that without at least sitting down and discussing the main issue? Unless that was your plan all along. Don't pretend that there's some sort of uh, mutual consent or honest bargaining going on here. There isn't. If the owners aren't serious enough about trying to get a deal to the point of at least sitting down and talking with the union, then they're not serious about getting a deal. Then they want to see a month of games lost. And when a month of games is lost, that takes a lot of the urgency away. Because then they say, oh, well, we can just keep it going. We can just keep it going. Uh, put more pressure on them. Put more pressure on them. You'll see fewer and fewer talks. That's how it was in 2004. That's unacceptable. It's not fair, and it's not right. And the part of it that's the least fair and the least right is that the NHL's founding principle for being able to do this, and I'm not guessing at this because it's come right out of Gary Bettman's mouth, is that they know their fans will still be there because they're hockey fans. That's how hockey fans are. Hockey fans aren't going to go anywhere. Hockey fans will wait 10 years for their sport to come back. It's a different breed. But to take advantage of that, that's just wrong. What can be done about this? Well, we know that the media is going to put some pressure on it, especially the Canadian media. Uh, they have really nothing else that they're talking about up there. It's going to be a big deal, but ultimately it's going to come down to fans, sponsors, maybe even the TV network saying, hey, no thanks. You guys need to get back on the ice and start playing. Somebody needs to speak up, somebody with some real power. That's what we saw with the NFL situation and the referees. It wasn't until there was this uprising in Green Bay over the atrocious call out in Seattle that we saw something firm happen. What can make a deal? There has to be something. We're talking about right now about a percentage difference between the players and the owners. Well, it's fit. the owners want 47%. The players have offered 52 to varying degrees. Somewhere in there is a deal to be struck. With the owners, you're looking at a, a situation. They're complaining that 18 of their teams are losing money 
but they're doing so just months after they put out a press release that pretty much boasted about having an all-time high in revenues. You can't have it both ways, guys. It doesn't work like that. There's a deal to be had in there. If the owners need to figure out a way to share their own money amongst themselves, then that's what needs to happen. What In 2004, they brought in a hard salary cap as well as a minimum. But they're the only league that did that without some significant form of revenue sharing to make sure that the Nashvilles and the Floridas and whoever else would have a legitimate chance to pay up to that minimum or higher or up to that cap. That's the point of the cap. If you want to try to make it fair, you have to make the, give these teams a fair chance at it. That's not in place right now. Donald Fair, the Players Association representative, has proposed a soft cap or a luxury tax. Now, everyone will hear that and think, oh, there he goes. He's the baseball guy. He wants to break up the cap. But what if you make it really hard, really punitive? You're going to have teams that will pay it. New York Rangers will pay it. Montreal Canadiens will pay it. You don't think the Toronto Maple Leafs, after not winning a cup since 1967, would pay it? How about the Penguins? They're hitting their head on the cap every year. They've got to pay Evgeny Malkin. They'll pay a luxury tax and go over it. If that money manages to work its way down to those other teams, then you don't have any problem. I love the fact that hockey has a salary cap. I think it's the reason that the Penguins are here. I think it's the reason that we're starting to see some teams uh, go back to Canada where they belong. Winnipeg has a team now. Quebec's probably going to have one before long. There might be a second one in Ontario. At some point or other, somebody needs to figure out that there's a deal here to be made. It's not that complicated. Teams are making money. They're making money hand over fist. Did you know that the Penguins in their arena control all of their revenues? When there's a concert in there, that money goes to the Penguins. When there's a circus or a dog show or a monster truck show, wrestling, money goes to the Penguins. Those people pay, pay rent. They get a per percentage of it. But the money goes to the Penguins. They're not the only team that's like that. There's money there to be had. There's money there to be worked around, there is a deal to be struck, but both sides have to be serious about it. The owners have to find a way to get to that table. People, myself included, need to put pressure on these guys to understand that they can't kick around the ordinary hockey fan every time a labor contract is up.